So I'll just go on to module three, which is um, creating events, pages, and templates. So the first thing that I need to do here is create some more pages. So I can create a page just by clicking pages here, right clicking it, and um, selecting insert new page. So when I do that, it'll prompt me to name my page. Calling it page two is fine. You can call it whatever you want. And uh, I'll just add a couple of these. So now I have um, three different pages in my project, and I can navigate throughout by clicking the tabs um, or double-clicking one to open it. So throughout my pages, um, you know, page one is currently my home page, and the first page is always going to be set as your home page by default. If you want to change your home page, you can double click on project properties and find home page, just like when we had project type, and change this to something else. But right now, we don't have any way to navigate between pages. So that's the first thing I'm going to add here is kind of a, a framework for getting from page to page. Um, that's usually done with an event, probably triggered by a button. Uh, the button would trigger an event that changes the page to something else. So I'm going to um, create a button that does that. And what I'm going to do is um, make it so that button shows up on all of my screens using a template. So what a template is, is it allows us to create basically a background that goes onto um, multiple screens or, or all of your pages if you want. And um, you can put widgets as part of that template that you can use on different pages. So I can create that template by clicking on templates, right clicking it, and picking insert new template page. Name it if you want to. And now I have my first template page. Um, to kind of tangent a little bit, something that people put on their template pages a lot is a company logo. So if I want to add that as an image, I can click on this um, image widget, drop it into the corner, um, click image path, click the browse button here, and um, select an image from my computer. Then once I have that image, I can either resize it just by clicking and dragging, or I can maintain um, the dimensions or the ratio by clicking and dragging the corner while holding control. So that's just how you can get a, an image or a logo into your project. Um, but I also want to add some page navigation. So in buttons, I like to use these arrow keys for page navigation, uh, just to show that we're going to be going to the next page. So I do need to create an event to do that. And this is a pretty simple example of an event. I can add that event over here in properties with my button selected. Um, select how to trigger it, either on mouse click, on mouse hold, on mouse press, or on mouse release. Um, all of these do pretty much the same thing. It, it's just triggering depending on when the mouse is held or, or released. Uh, the only one that's really different is on data update. What this would allow us to do is trigger an event when this value field changes. It's not so useful for a button because that would usually mean you're pressing the button anyway. But maybe for a numeric field, if you wanted to execute an event when the number changed, um, you would use this in that case. But I'm just going to pick on mouse click and click the plus sign to add my event or my action. So when I do that, I get this action list dialog, which will present you with a long list of actions containing pretty much anything um, that you might want to add to your project. So we can collapse and expand this list if you want to, just to make it easier to find things. Um, they are categorized to organize them a little bit. So I know that the category for my page navigation event is page. So this is where I want to be. Um, there are a couple different choices here. We could load a page, which, which would just let me choose which page to load. Uh, we could go back to the home page, go back to page one in this case. Previous page, go to the page before it on the list. So we'd go from page three to two, two to one, 
and one back to the end, it would wrap around and go back to the other side. Next page does the opposite, one to two, two to three, three to one. Last visited page is like the back arrow. So if I had gone from page one to three somehow, if I hit last visited page, it would return me to page one. Um, I look at show dialog a little bit later. This is how we can show a pop-up. But for now, I just want to pick next page and click OK. So whenever I click this arrow, it's going to take me back or take me to the next page, one to two, et cetera. Um, so this is a, a pretty simple template page. Before I simulate this, I'm going to add a, a couple more things just to flesh it out a little bit more. Uh, one of those things is the time which you can find in a dedicated widget actually under basic um, controls. And you can find this widget that shows the time. You can change the date format um, to change how it's displayed. Maybe you want to see only the date or only the time. You can change that here. Um, also, there is this one instead, which also shows the time, but allows you to change it using these up and down arrows. Um, maybe you need to use that instead if, if you might need to change the time. But I think usually the standard one is better. Um, also, I'm going to add a um, system variable tag showing my IP address. So up until now, all of the tags that I've been adding, I was at this tag uh, listing next to source. But when I was adding the system variables protocol, I mentioned that it was possible to use a shortcut to get to the system variables. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I can select system up here, and now I see all of my system variables. So things like the time are here, um, network, which is what I want. I can obtain the IP address, which is what I'm going to select here. So I can select IP address and click OK. And um, now this field is going to be displaying my IP address. Um, it's important to remember that my IP address is going to be bigger than this field. So when that happens, a lot of it's just going to get cut off. Um, to prevent that from happening, you can just make your field bigger. Uh, you can type in just a bunch of letters here so you can kind of estimate how big it is. Uh, but I think that'll be big enough for the IP address. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. So with that all set up, the last thing I need to do before I simulate this is to um, actually add the template to my pages. So on page one, I have a field called template while I'm at the page level properties. So if you're not seeing this, that might be because you clicked on a widget. So just click off into space to get the page level properties. Find template and change it to template page one. And I'm going to do that for all of my pages. So now I have this template in the background. I can't edit it. I could put stuff on top of it if I want to. Um, I will be able to press the buttons at runtime, but it's not part of this page. It's just the background. So if I want to edit it, I have to edit it from the template. So I'll go ahead and simulate that. So you see I have my time, IP address, um, my whole template is here, and I can change between my pages. So one more thing for the template that might be useful depending on how you've organized your pages is that I'd like to add something that shows me which page number I'm on. Um, to do this, we have a field in Project Properties that I can link a tag to to store the page number. So that field is current page. If I link a tag to it, I'll just pick um, tag six I haven't used yet. Then it's always going to be storing whatever page number I'm on, one, two, or three in tag six. Um, page request is also here. This is used to um, send a number from somewhere to force it to go to a certain page. So for example, if we added this link to a PLC tag and your PLC tag sent the number three, then it would force the screen to go to page three. Um, to use these tags, you have to enable sync options. So just set this to local remote. 
And then on my template page, I'm going to add a numeric field in the corner here, displaying tag six. So whenever I simulate, we're going to see an indication of what page number I'm on. So that's a, a pretty basic template, um, just showing how we can use that. Um, changing pages was a, a pretty basic event, but I'm going to show a couple other um, events as well. So if I go to page two, which I'm going to start working here on page two, um, I'm going to add some events that change the values of a tag. So I'll just put um, a numeric field here and some buttons to use. I'm going to put an up arrow and a down arrow because I'm going to use these to um, increase and decrease the values of a values of a tag. So in this numeric field, I'm just going to put tag five. And what I'd like to do is have this up arrow increase the value of tag five and the down arrow decrease its value. So for the up arrow, I need to add an event on mouse click. The event I'm looking for is um, to increment a tag, um, which is under the tags category. So here we'll see a couple different options. We could use data transfer, which would um, save the value of one tag into another tag. Toggle bit, which just flips the tag between zero and one. Um, really, it's looking for a Boolean tag. However, we do have this bit index field, which lets us choose um, the index of the bit we're toggling. So if I did select a short or something here, and I selected like bit index five, then it would toggle the, the fifth bit of that short. Set bit sets a bit to one. Reset bit sets a bit to zero. Uh, right tag allows me to pick any number and save that number into this tag. Or step tag, which is for incrementing and decrementing. So that's the one that I want here. So to set this up, I need to select the tag by clicking the plus here and um, picking tag five. Step, this is the value we're incrementing of. I want this to be a one. The step limit, um, this is the high boundary. So that's going to be a 10. I just don't want to go past 10. And um, do not step over. I need to set to true, which makes the limit actually um, take effect. So now I want to set the opposite up with my down arrow. Basically do the same exact thing. Use the step tag event. Um, pick tag 5. Step this time by negative 1 to go down. Set my step limit to negative 10 uh, to make a floor and set this to true so I don't go beyond negative 10. Uh, the last thing I want to do here is this is more of an optional thing, but I'm going to change the minimum and maximum of this field to negative 10 and 10. I say it's more of an optional thing because um, the button won't let me go beyond it anyway. However, I do have it set to read write, so if I tried to type in a bigger number, it would have let me until I just added this minimum and maximum. And I'll show what I mean by that. So I can go up to 10, and then I'm stuck. I can go all the way down to negative 10, and then I'll get stuck again. Um, if I try to enter something beyond the boundaries, then it's just going to reject it. So that's what I meant by setting the minimum and maximum. Um, to return to page one real quick, I did create two types of buttons here, um, a maintained button, or sorry, a momentary button and a maintained button. But there's kind of a third type of button that I could create. And that third type of button is a toggle button. This button is a little bit different than the first two because I'm not going to link any tag to the value field. I'm actually going to create an event instead. So the event is going to be triggered on mouse click. And the event that I want to use is toggle bit. So it's under tag. Um, select toggle bit. And I'll just pick that third Boolean tag. And now you'll see whenever I click the button, 
it works a little bit different than the other two buttons. Uh, just as a reminder, the momentary button I had to hold in, the maintain button I could press and let go of, but for the toggle button, um, I forgot to display it. But basically, it's just um, flipping between a one and a zero each time I press it. So whenever I press it and it's a zero, it goes to one and then back the other way. Um, really, the difference here is that this is an event. So that's why you see the behavior working just a little bit differently. Um, another event that I'd like to show is one to display a pop-up or a dialog. So first I need to actually create a dialog, which I can create in the same way that I made a page. If I just click over here on dialogs and right click it, I can insert a new dialog page. Um, it is a lot like a page. It even wants to name it like a page, but you can name it whatever you want. This name will be displayed on the dialog, kind of like what we have here. So it is important to call it something relevant. Um, a dialog is, is just like a page. You can add any widget to it that you want um, and treat it as you would treat a page. And notice that it has two buttons that come with it. Or you could add more buttons if you want. But the two buttons here, OK and Close, are just going to execute the action Close dialog, which is going to close this dialog. Um, you could add additional actions to these buttons if you want to. So now that I have a dialog, I can go back to page two and um, create a new button that will open that dialog. So with my button selected, I need to create an event on mouse click. Go back down to the page events and select show dialog and um, show dialog one. So now whenever I press that button, it will um, make dialog one appear. And I can get out of it either by clicking OK, close, or the X. And we do see the name of dialog one is here. Um, another event that I would like to show is to display the context menu. So back in module one, I um, showed how we could display the context menu by touching and holding with your finger, get that little right click type um, field that would let us to go into system settings. However, I think in most projects, um, you won't want to have that exposed because then anyone who is in front of the screen might get into system settings and start messing things up. So in order to um, prevent that from happening in project properties, we have this field context menu. When it's set to on delay, that'll mean that you can use the press and hold to access the context menu. But if you change it to on action or on some game mobile versions, it might say on macro, that will disable the press and hold and it will make it so that you can only um, use that feature um, by pressing a button or by executing the action somehow. So I'll just take this button and add a new event on mouse click. The event that I want is called context menu. So whenever I press this button, it will display the context menu. Um, so really, that's all the items for Module 3. Um, the items were adding pages, creating a template page, creating a dialog, um, page navigation events, tag events, system variables, page requests, and current page properties, and using the context menu macro.